Hello and welcome back to Blacker Couch Reviews. I'm your host Christina. We're back for a new series that we're going to delve into. Three Body Problem. It won our poll to replace Rick and Morty. It is an American science fiction television series created by David Benoff, uh, D.B. Weiss, and Alexander Wu based on the Hugo award-winning Chinese novel of the same name written by Lu Sixon. It looks like this is the second live action adaption or adaptation of this particular novel. It premiered March 21st of 2024. Our cast includes Javon Adepo as Dr. Saul Duran, John Bradley as Jack Rooney, Rosalind Chow as Dr. Ye, and Zine Tseng as a younger version, Liam Cunningham as Thomas Wade, Eliza Gonzalez as Dr. Augustina Salazar, Jess Hong as Dr. Chen Chang, Marlo Kelly as Tatiana Haas, Alex Sharp as Dr. Will Downing, C. Shamuka as Safan, Samar U. or Usmani as Raj, Benedict Wong as Clarence, and John Price as Mike Evans. There are eight episodes in this series, and the music is composed by my man, Ramin Duwadi. So what is this show about? Ye Wenji, an astrophysicist who sees her father beaten to death during a struggle session in the Chinese Cultural Revolution, is conscripted by the military due to her scientific background. She is sent to a secret military base in a remote region. Her decision at the base to respond to contact from an alien planet implicates a group of scientists in the present day, forcing them to confront humanity's greatest threat. And I definitely think you need to read that premise before jumping into the first episode like I did, because that would have probably helped fill in some blanks. Countdown was written by David Benoff. D.B. Weiss and Alexander Wu and directed by Derek Tassong. It was an intriguing opener, but it didn't draw me in all that strongly. I was so a little disconnected from the very bad CGI that I couldn't even take in what I what I thought was supposed to be happening. I also blame myself, as I pointed out, I probably should have done a little bit of research before just jumping in blind. And I do mean just by hitting play and getting into the episode. So I had to acclimate myself and that may have taken a little bit away of, from the experience. But for the most part, I felt like this was a brief introduction of getting to know who our characters are. I have fallen in love with none of them at this moment and it's okay sometimes it takes more than one episode to actually hook you and this was highly recommended so i do think that there is something here i do like where we started the episode because it's an important piece of history that we really particularly americans need to take note of with all this book banning and information or not information, but scientist bashing because all of a sudden everyone's smarter than the people that actually went to school for the subject matters in which none of us are, are, are educated in www.com some shit and think you know something That boggles my mind, okay? Look, I am a studier of history and and, and whatever the fuck they're going to put in my body, it ain't worse than what the fuck came before it. And it sure as shit ain't going to get better with what I got to offer because I'm not a scientist or a doctor, which is why 
They're the professionals. They put in the work. (laughs) I think that was one of the best lines of the episode. A shit time to be a scientist. Ain't it the truth? The populace has turned on them like they're somehow the crazy people. And now we're listening to the, the channels that are telling us all about aliens. And it's pretty funny that aliens are involved in this particular situation. And it's the scientists that are creating the technology, maybe, that could be a threat or something to that effect in in uh, what comes next because there was a little bit of premonition in particular with what happened in Mongolia in 1967 but I get ahead of myself the the gist of this episode is between two timelines we start off in Beijing 1966 Mao Zedong's cultural revolution where all of the the children have been told they've been lied to and they rise up against their professors, starts at universities and they start killing them because they believe everything to do with Western civilization and culture is tainted and so on and so forth. I'm sure by now anyone who's paying attention knows about their continued situation going on. Well, not in just China, but uh, other places in the world. Then you see Ye's father being questioned about physics and he doesn't denounce his education and even says like, you were a student in my class. I can't believe it. And it is a little concerning looking around and seeing nothing but madness because all of a sudden knowledge is something that is a threat. Followed by a cult of personality and a populace that unfortunately has been so mentally traumatized by past events that, sure, we can start creating our own narrative in which they will follow and react violently. If only that ever works in a good way. I I know we kind of look at the French Revolution, but that got out of hand. It may have started for the people because they were starving and the government or the monarchy was for the longest was not doing anything to to make their lives any better. But then 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 we just lost our fucking minds because sometimes when bloodlust is allowed to reign free, you get, well, the reign of terror. Hey, oh, 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 that's too much. Now you stepped over the line. Now we won't be talking that kind of shit. Sadly, even those that continue to tout how they believe their American values are no longer around and they're going away, so on and so forth. I would say that's the only America has the, the, that's the, the founding principle that made it different. It's like, fuck this. We're going to have some, a revolution that favors democracy, meaning we're all going to have to fucking compromise. There is no side. <laughs> oh, this is uh, uh, going into a whole other type of conversation. It really has nothing to do with this show. So I'm going to move on. But I felt so bad for Ye. Her mother turned traitor. Her father beaten in front of her with her mother doing nothing. Then she's taken to Mongolia in 1967 at a labor camp. And although she was the pupil of her father, they did keep her alive. There she meets Bai. Who knows? She she can read English and slips her a book talking about don't let nobody see you. I'm like, but you tossing it to me all up in the open. And I feel like anybody with eyeballs 
can witness this transaction. They fall in love, but unfortunately, he is an officer in said labor camp and she refuses to give up his name. So she goes back to the party facing certain execution. She refuses to denounce her father's ideas. And with her death certificate signed, she's rather saved out of the blue. And maybe they will elaborate on this because I felt like we went from her having cold water dumped on her while she's already in a freezing room on a stone slab that the next thing we were going to see is her being taken to the executioner's box or simply left there to die because that also is one of their options. But no, she's just in a military truck. There's some guy standing over her and they're like, well, you have a certain set of skills. You wrote this paper. We can utilize your skills, but you can never leave here. And considering how shitty her life has been up until now. Sign me the fuck up. (laughs) Good shit. She thinks that she's helping them to create weapons, but very quickly realizes that's not the case. And upon, I will say that man realizing that, look, we cannot pull the wool over this woman's eyes. If she is to help us, she needs to know what the fuck is going on after they show her an experiment in which they, they were sending a sound wave and all of the birds unfortunately responded to their death. And then she's finally told, look, we're not working on weapons. We're trying to connect or communicate. And when she asked with who, he's like, with whatever is out there, which is pretty damn dangerous. But hey, it was pretty dangerous to get on a boat in the middle of an ocean and hope we find land. That's the kind of species we're fucking with. And (laughs) it will either lead to our demise or our continued triumph. (laughs) Um, I wish we would have stayed in Beijing or in Mongolia or in China because I much preferred the past story arc because I felt like there were components there that were more intriguing than what we got in the present, which is London 2024. This is where we meet our five scientists and the mystery around the deaths of certain scientists and the revolution that everything we've known about physics is is a skewed due to these results that are across a lot of particle accelerators. But since no one can explain the results for Vera, her research has been shut down. She goes to talk to Saul, who there was a lot of quotes of Einstein. Well, I guess it makes sense, but it was Newton who developed the laws of physics. And even he got so far, though, I think Einstein figured out where he started to defer to God. So I kind of get it. And I'm not even a huge science person. I just like listening to Neil Tyson. I forget his name every time. (laughs) I also have really bad allergies. So every time I laugh, it's just nothing but in my chest. Uh, But she has a conversation with Saul, who is 32 and feels that he has not significantly contributed to science, having passed his window, the window being 30. Like, you don't even reach maturity until you're 24. What are you talking about? Uh, His research... It all defies the laws of, or the research that their results are seeing, defies all of the laws of physics. And if it's not an existence of God, what is an existence of, or what could it possibly indicate, leading to her question being, if not God, who, what's left? She then goes into this beautiful looking room and commits suicide. What the hell? Oh my God, no way. That was the gasp of the episode, not the sky winking, because I couldn't get over how CGI (laughs) unrealistic it looked. I was like, you could have did this once. Continuing to do it just highlights 
how much it it definitely disconnects. It's so bad too because y'all are outside in London in Oxford and you had a very realistic on the ground setting and then nothing but a very artificial looking CGI on top. Oh, that that really took away from it and I hope we don't have to deal with too much CGI or we're not going too deep into that because it being grounded is where it thus far is at its strongest. After Vera's suicide, we meet her underlings or the friends, I should say, Jen, who studies particle accelerator exults, Augie, who uh, has started her own nanotechnology research center, as well as Jack, who has created his own snack line. And then there was the other guy whose name I forgot because all it was relevant at the time was that he had a huge crust or used to date Jen, but she has moved on with a way hotter dude than him named Raj. And I'm not sure if they're dating though, because he's assigned from the military to keep an eye on things. But considering we know that all of the militaries are involved right now in trying to figure out this, these results, they know, of course the governments would know, more about what's going on than everyone else, which leads to our investigator, whose name I already forgot. There's been scientists dying in a similar fashion, all with writing countdowns on the wall or seemingly going crazy with no history of mental health. The one dude gouged his eyeballs out. This is not the only person that has died recently. They're looking for some type of headset technology that it, that uh, is considered a video game, even though it looks really weird. Technology Jen ends up getting her hands on when she visits Vera's mom, who we find out is yay. Plot twist. I will say I was not putting that shit together. Until she goes, oh, you were beautiful. And then they didn't immediately pan to the picture. I would have preferred instead of the let it linger, just go ahead and hit us with a bomb because anyone with any sense would have been like, oh, why are we seeing the picture of her? Oh, so we already got it before the reveal. It's like, yeah, I used to be age is a motherfucker. <laughs> her time is a motherfucker. Indeed. So now we have a connective tissue to the past and the present which is perfect because I couldn't really see what one had to do with the other Augie starts seeing numbers and that's a problem since it seems as if you get down to zero you may kill yourself or that's when your life expectancy is at an end why these particular people are seeing the numbers I don't know But someone approaches her and gives her something from an old cereal box from 1968 or something and tells her to look up at the sky at midnight because it'll be winking at her. But I feel like everybody in the world would be outside looking at the sky at midnight unless you sleep in and got to get to work in the morning. But we all know that that uh, there would be a lot of explaining to do because it would have been caught on camera. And yeah, everybody would have said it's a deep fake and we would not have believed them. But I do think, I do think if you have enough person to person visual confirmation that it don't matter what the fuck the news going to say, you're like, no, I know what I saw and I know he know what he saw and I know he know what he saw and we ain't crazy. Okay. Anything else I want to mention? Oh, the guy trying to pick them up at the bar. That's always annoying. But then gets intimidated by the fact that he or they were smarter than him, but then gets up there and sings a song and they both just stare at him. And I'm just like, what, what was the point of this scene other than I'm a woman and I'm annoyed and this is what I have to deal with. I don't even know what was a part of the whole, Hey, Jen is single and you used to like her and she's got a new guy. Don't make it awkward. I don't know if Jack's character is going to be 
like how does he fit into this? I, I don't believe he's a scientist. I'm just putting that out there right now. And then you got you got the one black character that has to stereotypically be smoking weed. I ain't got nothing against him smoking weed, but they've made it a central part of his character. Come on. I'm interested to see where this goes. Like I said, I think I will be more fascinated by what's happening in the past than I will be with what's happening in the future. There was a mention of a book. I did want to put that out there. Um, what was it called? Silent Spring. Here again, we are reminded in nature, nothing exists alone. And I think that's the perfect poetic note to leave the episode off on. Wherever you listen to this podcast, wherever good podcasts can be found, go down to the rating section, drop some stars, leave a review. My social media will be there as well. Like, share, subscribe. If you want to send feedback for the next episode, fill me in on things that I do not know. This is maybe a lot I missed in this first episode. Like or couch at gmail.com or you can leave a comment below. My social media will be there as well. Like, share, subscribe. Until the next time, peace, hair grease, and blacker magic. Bye.